Hey everybody, this is Zoria. Welcome to my art channel and another tutorial in Procreate. Today I will share with you how I watercolor a rose in Procreate. And if you have seen my other videos, you know flowers and plants are one of my favorite things to watercolor. Um, so I hope you enjoy and find value in this video. Remember to go in the description and to find the link to have access to the watercolor palette. And um, I will also put this sketch for you to download and practice this tutorial with me. Begin by picking the lightest pink on the color palette and I will pick my favorite watercolor brush which is on the packet that I made myself but an alternate brush that you can use to fill the petals is in the drawing set and it's called Eagle Hawk. That's my recommendation today if you don't have any watercolor sets. As you can see, I am not painting on the same layer. Petals that are next to each other are usually separating because this is gonna make a, dip, a big difference later when I try to do the shading and, and the edges on the petals. If you haven't yet, go ahead and open a new layer for a new set of petals. And since all the petals are the same color and the same shape, I want to lower the opacity. That way I can see what are the petals left in the same layer. This avoids a lot of confusion if you um, lower the opacity of the other layers. And you will see me doing that throughout the video until I finish all the petals and the flowers. But um, later on we're going to just return everything to the regular opacity that it's supposed to be. open a new layer for the third set of petals and after this one I think I will just need only one more. Alright, so as you can see, I only have two petals left, but these two petals are next to all of the other petals that I already colored in, this, in the other layers. So I'm going to have to open a fourth layer for those two petals that I have left. Alright, so as you can see, we are done painting all the petals of the flowers, but everything looks so flat and together. So go ahead and open a clipping mask on top of each of the layers where you already painted the petals. And make sure you tap on the layer and turn it into a clipping mask. 
because we're gonna make the flower three dimensional by adding some shades and some different tones on the bottom of the petals and on top and the brush I have chosen to do the edges on the bottom of the petal is inside the water set and it's called water blade and you already have this brush in your Procreate library and also go to the color palette and choose the darkest pink you have in there As you can see, I unselected the other layers and this is helping me, that way I can go straight to the petals that are on the layer I'm working on. Remember that we are on the clipping mask of the first layer of petals that we painted and we are going to be repeating this same step on all the other clipping masks of the other layers too. Before I forget to say, I have set the blending mode of each clipping mask to multiply to make the edge look a little more accentuated and a little more darker. Um, and you do that by tapping on the layer and tap on the letter N and then scroll to multiply. Alright, so the petals are already looking individual from each other and that was the goal by adding the dark pink on the bottom of the petals. The next thing I'm going to do is add some a warm tone on top of each of the petals. And for this I'm going to be using the same brush I used for the bottom of the petals. But we're going to change the color. I'm going to share the code with you on the screen. And we are still using the same clipping mask. We already opened on top of the petal layers we already painted at the beginning.
So now it's time to fill the leaves and for this I'm going to open a new layer and I'm going to go ahead and just put all my leaves on the same layer since they are separate from each other, they are not overlap like the petals. That is fine. And also you can go ahead now and go back to the same brush you used to fill the petals earlier that is in the drawing set and it's called Evil Hawk. Alright, and to add the dark edges on the leaves, I'm going to go ahead and go change to the darker green I have in my color palette. And also, I'm going to go back to the water set of brushes and use the water bleed brush. And to add the edges on the leaves, I added a new clipping mask on top of the layer where I painted the leaves already. And to add the details on the leaves, um, I just have pure white and the color is on the screen. And for this, I just went to the inking set of brushes and chose the syrup brush, which is great for details. Alright, so on this part, I'm going to go ahead and revisit the clipping mask I made for the petals of the flower. And with the soft blend brush inside the air brushing set, I'm going to go ahead and add a little thin shadow on the bottom of the petals. And this is the shadow that the petals are casting on each other. And this will make the flowers, um, they will give it more depth and more dimension.
Alright, so now it's time to add a background to this art and for this I'm going to open a new layer and I'm placing that layer under all of the other layers that I have already painted because the background is going to be behind everything else. And if you don't have any watercolor sets yet, um, you can go ahead and go to the water set of brushes and choose the blotch there that you can use that as a stamp. Or you can always just paint a background with the water brushes inside the water set. Um, either the wet sponge or the wet glaze or even the wash. They were really good to paint watercolor backgrounds. Since I wanted to add some burning edges on my background, I went ahead and added a clipping mask over the background and set the blending mode to linear burn. Also, I chose a darker color, slightly darker than the background, and um, went back to my water set of brushes and chose the wet sponge and added some edges to this background. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do, and we are almost done with this R. The only thing we have left to do now is to add some splashes and some stamps over the rows, which I'm, uh, I want to do that to give it a more dramatic look. Um, if you don't have a watercolor brush set, go ahead and visit your water set and pick the water flakes, and that will serve your splashes very well. I always open a new layer for each of the splashes and the stamps that I make. That way, if I want to change the size of one individual splash, I can go ahead and do it. And um, I usually like when I'm done and happy with the placement and the size, I merge everything. But um, meanwhile, I'll just keep in different layers until I'm happy with it.
Orion did have concluded this watercolor art for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and share this video. And your comments are very, very appreciated.